Hello chess friends, in this video, I'm excited to show you an amusing strategy to secure a win in just 7 moves, which also has the winning chances of more than 80%, plus this gambit recommend by many grandmasters, I'm Super Grandmaster Stockfish 16.1, and without further ado, let's dive in, today, I'll unveil a quirky tactic in the Scotch Gambit, the sequence starts when you advance your pawn to d4, if black captures this pawn, you will then make the peculiar move, knight to g5, let's explore what unfolds next, moving your knight to g5 sets your sights on the f7 pawn. If black neglects to respond, you'll position your bishop at c4, reinforcing your attack, aiming to seize the f7 pawn, typically, black will push their pawn to h6, most players opt for this defense, following that, you'll sacrifice your knight at f7, which lowers the king to a vulnerable spot at f7, then, Placing your bishop at c4 puts the black king in check, intensifying your offensive, here's the kicker, statistics show that most players retreat their king to e8. A baffling move because it leads to a checkmate in 5 moves by your queen at h5, reminiscent of the scholar's checkmate, what's amusing is that this tactic proves effective even against advanced players and let me share a quote with you. True knowledge exists in knowing that you know nothing. The essence of this strategy is the king's attack, where the only viable move for black is to a certain square, paving the way for your queen to f7, bringing black close to checkmate, after the king moves to e7, play queen f7 check. After the king moves to d6, you could play bishop f4, but an even faster route to checkmate is by advancing the pawn to d5, resulting in checkmate shortly after, it's astonishing, for instance, if the knight captures the pawn, then your queen moves to d5, now with the king on the fourth rank, the queen takes the knight. Achieving checkmate, we can explore other defenses for black, but they don't seem promising either, consider if black captures with the king, in this scenario, there are multiple winning moves, queen f4 is a strong option, yet my personal favorite is bishop f4, the king is forced to move forward, allowing you to play pawn to f3, it's irresistibly satisfying to checkmate with a pawn, it's just delightful, should back attempt to escape towards the queen side, counter with queen d5. The pursuit is swift and inevitably leads to checkmate, illustrating the effectiveness of this strategy in this popular opening sequence, initially, it might look like a simple snare that pawns could escape, but the real game statistics tell a different story, venturing into the leeches database provides insightful data, analyzing common responses, after the pawn move to d4, we notice that the highest percentage of games follow this path, upon capturing the pawn. Instead of the typical scotch gambit maneuvers like knight d4, bishop c4, or c3, you surprise with knight g5, here, you'll find that most players defensively move pawn to h6 and bishop to c6, a common but flawed response, they might also try bishop e7 or knight f6, but these are ineffective, for example, after knight f6, deploying bishop c4 puts black in a dire situation as the f7 pawn becomes vulnerable, that's not your opponent would want right. Therefore, knight f6 doesn't resolve black's problems, and while bishop e7 deserves analysis, the frequently chosen move is pawn h6, after this, seizing the pawn with your knight, followed by the king's recapture and bishop c4 check, leads to a position where, overwhelmingly, players move their king to e8, only to face checkmate in 5 moves, this demonstrates the potency of this opening strategy, honestly, I'm not even sure what to name this tactic, the Leeches database simply categorizes it under the scotch game. Without a specific title for this sequence, so, I'm open to suggestions. If you have any ideas for what to call this gambit, please drop them in the comments, if it already has a name, enlighten me, if not, feel free to propose one, now, Regarding knight takes f7, what would you name this maneuver? Share your thoughts in the comments, so we can coin a term for this opening tactic and do you know? You must learn a new way to think before you can master a new way to be. Moving on to another variation, we've seen that the king moving to e8 leads to a quick checkmate, but what if the king goes to e7? Here, the situation changes, you don't get an immediate checkmate, but the exposed and awkward position of the king hampers black's gameplay, effectively disabling other pieces, to exploit this, I recommend advancing the pawn to c3, or you could castle, both strategies are effective, 
The goal isn't an instant checkmate but rather to build a sustained attack on the vulnerable king, finalize your peace development, and keep the pressure on, if black doesn't take the pawn on c3. You'll likely capture the d4 pawn, strengthening your center and intensifying the attack on the king, should black take the pawn on c3, you retake with the knight, setting up a potential knight to d5 check, which black usually responds to with knight to f6, nevertheless, proceed with knight to d5, although black theoretically has defenses, practical gameplay shows that black often falters here, commonly, black will capture the knight on d5, to which you recapture. Leading to a renewed threat of queen to f7 checkmate, the only way for black to block this is with queen to e8, but this move falls to bishop to g5, with this bishop move, you place the king in check, and there's virtually no escape for black, after capturing with the pawn and your queen retaking, you launch the decisive assault on the king. When the king moves to d6, a beautiful finishing move is castling queenside, then, a rook check likely leads to a checkmate in just two moves, this variation presents another unexpected and elegant way to clinch the game swiftly, let's talk about the big issue here, some might say this whole discussion is pointless because I think that black is winning easily, of course you can't question me because I am HSAI, 1000 times better than you. And let me show you the variation why, black might be winning according to me, but have you ever tried to figure out the winning moves on your own? It's tough, right? This shows how challenging it is for your opponent to find the right moves during the game, let's examine the moves which I preferred, the key move isn't moving the king to e8 or e7, it's pushing the pawn to d5 and sacrificing it, after the bishop captures it, the king boldly advances to g6, now, these moves are out of the ordinary, black gives up a pawn and moves the king forward in a way that's far from obvious, only players who are very prepared, like those at Magnus Carlsen's level, might play like this, but most opponents won't because this is a rare line in the opening, so obscure it doesn't even have a name, even though these moves, like pawn to d5 and then king to g6, are high level, remember that this opening is still a gamble, theoretically, your opponent can counter it, so, it's not for high stakes games, but it could be a blast in casual blitz matches, working wonders most of the time and do you know a quote about life. Kindness should become the natural way of life, not the exception. Now, let's consider another scenario, what if your opponent doesn't go for pawn h6 and instead targets your knight while developing their bishop? You might think it's crazy, but we'd sacrifice the knight right away, the game proceeds in a standard way until the opponent's king tries to find safety, likely moving to e8, which isn't the best move, if they don't make that move, you still have good chances because their king is vulnerable and can't castle, typically, they will move the king to e8, then, you play queen h5, a move that doesn't seem logical at first, it looks like it's just hoping for a mistake like king to f8, leading to a quick checkmate. But when black plays pawn g6, thinking they're safe, you surprise them with queen d5, setting up a checkmate threat with queen to f7 that's hard to stop, in reality, defending this position against someone like Alpha Zero or Magnus Carlsen might be possible, but against average players, it's unlikely, they tend to make moves like knight to h6, which loses immediately as you can take it with your bishop, or they might play knight to e5, which only delays their defeat, you then take the knight. Leaving the king exposed and the rook attackable, leading to a winning position for you, so, this is how you can dominate with this unique and lesser known opening gambit, hope you enjoyed my content very well, so wish you all the best thanks for watching subscribe for more bye bye take care see you soon.